Hello and welcome to the Midnight Quilt Show. Tonight, I'm making a quilt that uses eight at a time half square triangles and four at a time flying geese. And I'm gonna give it to that extra special quilt worthy person in my life. Guess who designed this kit? Me. And it's available for purchase on Blueprint and all the details are in the description box below. Now let's check out this fabric. This quilt is going to use Boundless Rhapsody prints. Bright, bold, beautiful colors that are really gonna pop off my quilt. Now this is gonna be a large, beautiful quilt for a bed. So I'm gonna be using some larger blocks and some intricate piecing on a bigger scale to really make this quilt quickly. So I have my beautiful purples, blues, a pop of hot pink because who doesn't love that? And some geometric prints to really offset the floral. Now all it's left to do is start cutting up this fabric. Let's get to it. Since this quilt uses four at a time flying geese and eight at a time half square triangles, I'm gonna need some pretty big squares to start with. So many half square triangles in this quilt, so we're gonna make it snappy by making them eight at a time. Now this is something I showed you way back when, when we saw the wallflower quilt, but I'm gonna show you how to do it again. I have some big squares, some not so big squares, and some little squares. I've got some strips, so I'm gonna keep cutting up this fabric and we'll see how it all comes together. So I have the first part of my squares laid out and these bigger ones will turn into my half square triangles and these smaller ones will actually make my four at a time flying geese. So let's start with the half square triangles. I'm gonna grab a piece of background fabric and draw two diagonal lines on the back of it. Then I'm gonna put that larger square right sides together with a square of my print, and so a quarter inch on each side of both of those lines for a total of four seams. Once I have all my sewn lines, then I'm gonna cut it in half. I'm gonna cut on the vertical half and the horizontal half, and then cut them on the drawn lines. When I open them up, I'll have eight half square triangles. Now, if you were into drum rolls, this would be the place to do it because now we can start to see those eight half square triangles. So beautiful. But even though I'm making eight at a time, I still need to press them and trim them to the right size, but then I'll get to start making my flying geese blocks. So one of my favorite things to do when I'm not quilting, of course, is to hop on the episodes and read your comments and answer questions when I can. And on the Feathered Arrows quilt pattern, Patty said thank you for the pattern. She was excited to try it out and she loved my sense of humor. And I'm glad that somebody does because I think I'm pretty hilarious myself. These eight half square triangles are finished, but before I can put them into a big, beautiful block, I need to do the four at a time flying geese. So I'm gonna grab four squares of background fabric and a bigger square of the print. On the back of the background squares, I'm gonna draw one diagonal line from corner to corner. In the comment section of the Modern Bursting Star Quilt, Deborah mentioned two things you should never tell a quilter. You should never comment on the size of his or her stash or even touch or even think about touching the fabric scissors. And I completely agree with that as I'm sure most of you quilters do. However, I think a comment on a fabric stash is fine if it's phrased in the right way. You know, as in, Deborah, you should buy more fabric. Deborah, your fabric stash isn't big enough. I think in that case, it's totally fine to make comments on it. Taking my larger square of print fabric, I'm gonna place it here, and I'm gonna take two of my background triangles. Not triangles, squares. I'm gonna take two of my background squares and place them right sides together so that they go diagonally from one corner to the other. So it's gonna look something like this. Now here's the important thing. Those drawn lines should probably connect somewhere along there. And then I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch on either side of that drawn line. It's not looking like four at a time flying geese yet, but that's okay. I'm gonna cut on that drawn line, press them open, and then do it again. Now, if your flying geese start looking like hearts, that means you're heading the right direction. And it's so pretty and lovely, and it just reminds me of the person I'm making this quilt for because I heart them so much. Okay, I've got two more background squares. I'm gonna place them right sides together, except now they're gonna go in the opposite direction. And I really want that line to go this direction. That's gonna give me a, the flying geese, not a different shape. And I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch on both sides of both of these lines. 
Again, a perfect time for a drum roll if you were into that kind of thing. But I'm going to cut on the drawn line and press it open for four flying geese blocks. Now I'm going to trim up my flying geese to make them the right size. The way that the block is written is you have a little bit of wiggle room just in case your piecing isn't perfect. So I'm trimming up the dog ears, making sure they're the right size, and then finally we'll see them come together into the blocks. So the first block of this quilt is going to have the corner look like this. I'm going to use two squares, one of my background and one of my print, and two of those half square triangle blocks. Now pay close attention to the fabric placement because it makes a lovely arrow that's going to point to the center. I'm going to sew them together in groups of two and then sew those strips together. My quilt block is going to use four of the corner units, but I'm going to show you what half of it looks like first. So I'm going to grab my second corner unit, like this but there's a cute little piece strip that goes in the center. And this is gonna make the block look complex, although it's really made out of those basic shapes. So I'm gonna sew these together along the short side and then sew the three together in a row. So there's a first half and I had the second half already pieced. And you can tell it's exactly the same as the top, it's just been rotated and it has another piece strip in the center. This strip was made exactly the same way as the sides, it just has a little bit of a longer blue strip in the center. Now all I have to do is sew them together here and here, and I have the first big, beautiful block of this quilt. And check out that block. It's the perfect way to show off these big, beautiful prints in the fabric, and I know that special person is going to love it. Okay, but this quilt actually has two big, beautiful blocks, so let me show you how the second one comes together. The second block of the quilt uses a lot of the same elements as the first block, but there's one main difference. I'm gonna make a square and a square block to go in the center of that second block. It's kind of like that really quilt-worthy person that you would make such an intricate quilt for. And speaking of quilt-worthy people, I was looking at the comments and on Modern Bursting Star, Jordan was talking about how her husband is super quilt-worthy. Not only is he a great husband, I'm guessing, but he also volunteers to do her unquilting. She said he sees the seam ripper and the panic in her eyes, and he says, hey, I got this. What a cool husband. Okay, well, we're gonna make our square and a square block, and what I've done is on the background squares, I've drawn a diagonal line from corner to corner. Now, we've already seen this, no big deal here, except we're going to place them in the opposite corners of our block. Now here's the main difference. When we did our four at a time flying geese, we wanted these drawn lines to connect. This time, we don't. So it's kind of like, do this until I tell you not to do it anymore. Another main difference is instead of sewing a quarter inch on each side of the line, I'm actually gonna sew directly on the line. So I'm gonna sew two of the squares on, on opposite sides, trim a quarter of an inch away from that sewn line, press open, and then repeat with the opposite corners. So I'm laying the two squares in the opposite corners, again, making sure those lines aren't touching. They're going from this direction, and I'm gonna sew on that line, trim, and press open for our square in a square block. So there's a beautiful square in a square block, and I wanna point out that my corners aren't coming all the way to my edge, and that's good, because when I sew these seams together, it's gonna to give me a nice, perfect point. But the one thing I want you to remember that this fabric is so busy and bright and beautiful, when the whole quilt's done, you're probably not gonna even see the points anyway, so don't stress out about that part. As I start building my block, the next piece to add will be this strip unit, and it's pretty easy to see how it goes together. It's a wider and a thinner strip next to each other, and they're gonna go on all four sides. And it's really gonna build up this background fabric and make this block look even bigger than it is. The corner units are actually a half square triangle with two strips of background fabric sewn to it. Really easy in how it goes together, and I've made four for each of the corners. And you can see there is the first part of the block. Now there's more to this block, but I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this by sewing the blocks together in rows and then sewing those rows together. Now that this is put together, the block is gonna start coming together very quickly. I just need a bigger square of that beautiful fabric, and then I've assembled four of my flying geese units together in a row. So it's kind of ironic. I made four at a time and then sewed them together four in a row, but they're different prints. And there's no rhyme or reason. You're just gonna pick four, sew them together, and I'm gonna do another set 
on the other side. So that's actually that big, beautiful block. All I have to do now is sew those together, these together, and then finish the block. I have all the blocks together for my first row, and this is where we're gonna see all those beautiful prints really start to shine. So we've already seen block one, and block two with our square in the square and the flying geese. And our next block is just the same block one again with different fabrics. Then the next one is the same block two, except it's gonna be rotated. So you can tell the orientation is slightly different there. We'll see why in a moment when the next rows come together. And then another block one, again, with a different, fun, bright, beautiful print. Since these blocks are so big and beautiful, I don't need any sashing to go in between them. So I'm gonna sew them together in a row and we'll see what that looks like. And then we have the second row already put together. The reason I'm rotating the second block is because as they come together in the rows, these squares will come together and kind of give it that secondary pattern, which is really fun. So I'm gonna sew these rows together, add the rest of the quilt, and I'll show you what it looks like. This quilt top is finished, and it's a perfect example of using a big, bold print in big blocks to really show it off. Now I'm gonna get this basted and start quilting this big old quilt. So this humongous quilt is basted and ready for quilting, and if any of you have actually put together the layers of a sandwich, you know what kind of swearing and struggling went on. But now that it's ready to go, I'm gonna give you some specific tips on how to quilt those large quilts on your sewing machine. I know it can be a bit of a pain, but the gal I'm giving this quilt to is so worth the effort. The first and most important tip to remember is that even though this quilt is really large, I'm only focusing on a small area at one time. So instead of looking at the whole thing, I'm just gonna work in this area and work on the next area until the whole thing is done. In the block, I'm gonna quilt a feather that starts from the corner, and I'm gonna quilt a nice elongated swirl that lands somewhat close to the center of the square. That's gonna act as the spine of my feather because I'm gonna start working my way back around that swirl quilting petal shapes. And these are kind of half heart shapes they're gonna swing out, come close to the edge of the area, and then come back in to the spine. I'm gonna keep quilting those half heart shapes until I make my way along the whole spine returning to my starting point. This design is perfect for tip number two of quilting large quilts on your machine. I wanna pick designs that will fit within the area of my machine. I don't wanna try wrestling the quilt for really long fluid designs. I'm gonna think of it as chunks and quilt in this area and then move on. Whether that's a feather design or an all-over design, as long as it fits within the area, it makes it a lot easier to manage. Now I'm gonna start quilting some wavy lines in the background of this area, just to give it a fun look. Starting from one edge, I'm gonna quilt a wavy line to the center block, then travel and quilt another line back to the edge. It's this travel line that makes these wavy lines look as though they're going behind the blocks. Now, as I'm quilting the wavy lines, I'm making it more of a gentle wave. It doesn't have to be extremely wavy. I just want a little bit of a texture. As I start to progress past the center block, the line will get a little bit larger as I go from the edge all the way to the edge. Again, traveling once I get to that point and then echoing my way back. What's nice about quilting wavy lines is I don't have to stress about making it perfectly straight. A nice gentle wave will do the trick. So even though that traveling is making the wavy lines look like it's going behind the block, what it's really doing is giving me a great transition point so that I don't have to keep going over the whole quilt. Now another thing to remember when you're quilting those large quilts on your sewing machine is that gravity is your enemy. We don't want any part of the quilt hanging down because you're not only fighting the quilt, but you're also fighting gravity. So reposition that quilt often, throw it up over your shoulder if you need to, whatever it takes to get that quilt finished, which is what I'm gonna spend the next few hours doing because this special gal is gonna love this quilt once it's done, or at least she better. This big, beautiful quilt is finished, and even though it's pretty large, it was a snap to quilt since I used the eight at a time half square triangles and the four at a time flying geese. I used those elements to make two blocks that repeated throughout the quilt and gave me the perfect palette to experiment with some machine quilting designs. 
Focusing on one block at a time made this large quilt a lot easier to manage. And quilting those feathered swirls in the hot pink blocks and some nice wavy lines added a beautiful texture to this bright, bold fabric. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you soon on another episode of the Midnight Quilt Show. This quilt is gonna look great on my bed.